Uh, Georgia, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. It is an absolute pleasure. First things first, how are you doing at the moment? How's things? Uh, I'm doing great. <laughs> this is a, a free free day, so I, I'm enjoying my free time. <laughs> You're spending free time with me. I do appreciate that. Aside from the free time, what is kind of keeping you busy at the moment? Yeah, I'm working on the Italian Big Brother. Uh, I, um, I make the um, direction of the prime time uh, show. Uh, it's twice uh, twice a week on uh, Monday and uh, Saturday, and uh, this is a, a day <laughs> of freedom. <laughs> A day of freedom indeed. That's just Big Brother's just come obviously back to the UK after a long time away. Uh, have you been paying attention to that? Yeah. yeah. Is it is it very popular over there? Uh, yeah, still it it's still popular. Yeah, we have uh, switched from uh, North Nip Big Big Brother to VIP. It's uh, it, it's a mix this time with uh, NIP and uh, VIP. Very cool, very cool. Um, then when you kind of, considering it's December 1st today, when you reflect on the last year, 2023 as a whole, are you satisfied with what you've been able to accomplish this year overall? Absolutely, absolutely satisfied because this was the year that I have spent the most time on, uh, my, on my own stuff because I have made in all this year Together with the, the work on, on television, I have always uh, uh, shot uh, um, short movies, uh, promotional, commercial videos, uh, uh, and corporate videos, etc. This is my first feature. I, um, I've been thinking for, for a long time for what could be the, the, thing, the, the best thing to start. And I realized that the best thing was a, a documentary on the things that I like uh, more because I'm a big fan of uh, horror and on uh, gruesome and mysterious facts. And so I, I made a lot of research about this, uh, these things, uh, about the, the, the United States. They are very rich of uh, this stuff. I have found many, many uh, interesting things and uh, they couldn't fit in just one movie. So I decided to start on, uh, okay, I, I will concentrate on the oldest part of uh, the states, the New England, the seven major states that are the, the, the oldest, uh, the oldest part with um, the oldest stories. And I have found many, many interesting, interesting stories. The, the thing that I was looking for was the, the uncommon uh, uh, thing, because there are a lot of stories, famous, well-known by people, but also about uh, famous characters. There are um, not so famous stories, uh, sides uh, hidden uh, in the pages of history, like the real story of the Plymouth uh, pilgrims, uh, and so I try to, to tell these stories. Um, I have shot during the, the last summer, uh, mm. not, not this one, summer 22. I have been uh, shooting um, for uh, one month and I have uh, touched 84 locations that it's a big result in, in just 30 days. <laughs> Just jumping from one location to to the other in uh, just one hour, I had to make uh, a plan of a, a route uh, with Google Maps. Uh, it's okay. Now I have in this area I have ten spots to to visit. Uh, okay, let's do it uh, as fast as I can. And I have done everything on, on my own because I I, I chose to do it uh, without uh, a crew. I have shot everything on my own, and then I have uh, cut, uh, I have written, uh, I have written after the shooting, because I have realized that when I was shooting, I, I, I found many other interesting things while I was in the locations. And so I, I added the new chapters, new stories, new, new things. And in the end, I um, I have assembled these uh, 30 stories, 
that they, they are that are connected by by art. Art mm. is the art is the connection of uh, each story because the narrator wanders in a in an ancient abbey and he goes in a big uh, in a big room, a big hall, and he founds a lot of uh, famous uh, American uh, paintings. They are the, the inspiration for the for the stories. So each story is uh, is drawn by by art. Mm. This is uh, the thing because I, I'm also a, a musician, and so my my real inspiration was featured at, at an exhibition by Mussorgsky with uh, the paintings that uh, tell the stories in the in the suite. It is, we are, of course, talking about, we'll share the title and common stories of American horror, USAH, for short. Um, and it's incredible to step into this world of horror that you've chosen to do it because, of course, as you've said yourself, broad portfolio of work you've done previously. You've just set out and told me this story, like, of what, of how you got to where we are now. Well, take me back to the earliest point, in particular your vision, because... What you've done is immensely large in itself, but was that vision bigger? What did it look like? I okay, I I tried to to tell the the stories uh, with the with all the materials that that I have, have shot, but obviously uh, the the most um, mostly the the things that I told they have no. Um, uh, no paintings, no photographs, no video or else. And so I had to to use uh, um, famous illustrators, famous uh, Italian illustrators, to draw uh, uh, the, some part of the stories. And then I used the artificial intelligence to, to, to tell uh, other things. Because we have uh, we have uh, things about also famous people like John Belushi, like John Lennon, and when we talk about these stories, we have no material. When we mm -hmm. talk about uh, uh, John Belushi, that was supposed to be um, a Bankman in Ghostbusters, uh, I I made with artificial intelligence, uh, I made images of John Belushi. Uh, dressed like uh, Venkman, like uh, Bill Murray in Ghostbusters, then also John Lennon in the corridors of the Dakota building that uh, used to see a uh, uh, ghost of a woman. Uh, all these, all these things, uh, I have made the this with, with artificial intelligence and with illustrations, and I hope. That it helps the the viewers to uh, appreciate more the um, these stories, uh, because I could also use a picture of the of the character, but it, it wasn't the same, because uh, I think that you are more into the story, looking at what I'm telling to you. I found it fascinating. The use of the AI, the AI art was fascinating. Initially, I wasn't sure what I was looking at. And I'm looking at it and thinking, OK, this is AI art and how it flowed and how it worked, as you said, with a mix of illustrations and other images as well. It works brilliantly. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is uh, my this was my goal. I wanted to to um, uh, I wanted the people to tell. Is it real? This image, or is it a drawing? Is it a real photograph? Uh, in fact, many people that have uh, watched the the movie, they have told me, "Where did you find that picture of John Belushi dressed as a Ghostbuster?" Yeah, it was a uh, Italian job. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. When you when you when you first set out on this path, you had this vision. Did you initially know you were just going to stick to the New England uh, location? Well, it, it was the, the the easiest way to start because it's really rich of uh, of stories of Asian stories. Because obviously the the western side is two uh, two hundred years younger. And so there are uh, less stories. There are many stories. In fact, now I'm doing my researches uh, for the possible second and third part of the of the movie, because the the second part would uh, supposedly be about the southern side of the U.S. 
and the third part about the Western and the Middle States uh, that are younger, but they are also rich of, uh, of stories, uh, uh, particularly stories about uh, movies, because it's the, obviously the, the side of uh, Hollywood and, uh, and mm. there are a lot of uncommon stories to tell. Absolutely. And it is an inspired choice, as you say, because of the history alone. Um, and the fact you ended up with so much material is, is simply incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of material. Why, <laughs> um, why did you choose art as the sort of introductory medium to the stories? You know, you described, obviously, the narrator looking, we're talking and he's looking at paintings and that's kind of how we lead into it. Why did you decide to go down that route? Uh, I uh, I was uh, deciding between music or between art, but obviously the the art is more uh, direct to because you visually have uh, uh, an immediate uh, inspiration. Uh, many viewers have uh, um, recognized the the paintings, even, yes. even though. They don't know exactly which painting is it, but they suppose, okay, I think he's going to tell me this kind of stories. And so it's, uh, it's interesting to open the chapter to using a heart uh, in, in this way. Again, it was such a unique element to the, the movie, to the documentary, um, that it, and it, as you say, it breaks it up into chapters. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you talk about research, and obviously you said already you are a fan of horror in itself. So for a lot of the stories, did you have to do quite a bit of research beforehand? Or was there any one particular story that you knew quite a lot about before? Hey, Allora, I made a, a lot of research before. And so I made my, my route on Google Maps just to study the, the route of, of each day. But when I was on, on location, I... I usually found many other uh, uh, things that I didn't know, asking people, uh, looking at, uh, at books, uh, and looking on internet, uh, on local sites, and I found out uh, other stories. In fact, then I had to choose among uh, 60 stories, I had 60 stories, and then I, and I chose the 30 more uh, uncommon, to, to connect. The, the hardest part was uh, uh, connect each story, giving a, a, a feel rouge uh, so you can jump from one to, to the other, but not with a, okay, cut and, and go. Uh, I tried to, to give a, a normal, a, a natural passage uh, from one to another. Yeah, it's one of the things I'd praise heavily about what you've done here is the flow, is the fact that you don't, as you say, just cut dead and move to another story. It rolls into the next one. And that is, it, it, it's amazing that you were able to be, like you had the stories to actually do that. That's incredible in itself. Thank you very much. Are you, as a as a person researching this stuff, reading about it and learning more and more about it, did you find yourself quite sceptical of the stories you've covered here? Uh, I, I want to believe, as uh, someone <laughs> told before me, I want to believe. I know that many of these stories uh, could be uh, not real, but they are, uh, the fact is they are based, all the stories are based on true facts. Mm -hmm. This is the thing I wanted to, uh, th th that was sure. They are not fiction. They are all true stories based on uh, documents, based on uh, the, um, testimony. And I'm, no, I'm not skeptical. Even though I have read um, things of, um, mainly about uh, the warrants, about uh, Ed and Lorraine, and now the, there is a, a new series that uh, absolutely is against them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I want to believe what uh, what I've always uh, believed. <laughs>
which is fair enough. I wanted to get your opinion that. Looking into these tales, so you're diving into these stories, you're learning more and more about the truth behind them and finding out more information. Did you find that your mind got changed on any particular one that maybe beforehand you didn't have too much of a strong opinion about, but now you do? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll tell you. Many stories, I when I shot... I just knew just a little about that thing. After the shootings, I have made all the researches uh, after after, and it, it was uh, it was easier because when you are uh, when you are on location, uh, you mm, you see if the things are uh, interesting. You see if if there is really something that's worth to tell, mm. uh, and then then. Then, after mm, you can evaluate the the importance of the story, and, and you can re, 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 reset your mind about uh, the things. What about what about one that scared you a little bit, set a chill on your spine, maybe because you didn't know as much before? Well, uh, the the Denver State Hospital. It is a, that's a story that I I didn't know. I just mm. knew I just knew that it was the inspiration for H.P. Uh, Lovecraft uh, uh, Arkham Asylum because I I read that uh, he, he used to, during his uh, travels in, in the New England he heard about the stories about this uh, spooky place about the terrible uh, practices that made uh, by surgeons uh, and by the, the nurses. And I didn't know man, these stories. I have made uh, a lot of researches and I have found out that uh, it's uh, um, more than 100 years of uh, horrors. horrors. Mm -hmm. And then when they tore down the, um, the Denver. So now you can see only the, the facade and, and some uh, other buildings and uh, other corridors in, in the subways. But, uh, but it's, I, I can tell you that it's really spooky when you, when you go there, even though now they are, um, it's a condo now. There are apartments, uh, it, uh, it, um, in, it's in Denver. Uh, if you know these stories, uh, looking at that that facade, you you really think about uh, okay, Lovecraft was here. He was looking at the same uh, building. Uh, he was imagining uh, what was happening uh, inside uh, those buildings, uh, and it was uh, also visiting the um, the graveyard. That it's not. It's it's a bit far. From the from the hospital, it was uh, hidden because there are no uh, the, the graves are without names. There are only numbers, and it's really creepy because you you see these numbers. Uh, okay, each uh, each paper of the of the patient tells the name, but where are these papers? Who is buried here? How he died? Uh, eh, this is really creepy when you when you're there and when you think uh what you are walking on yeah it sounds an immense experience something very very unique particularly as you said you were on a time limit so you didn't really i guess get too long to stay and dwell on it yeah absolutely absolutely i have just uh, in fact i had to make the shooting as fast as i could just preparing everything the night before Okay, I will have to do this thing. Then I have to go back to the car and uh, uh, rush to the next location. Uh, but I try to to make everything that I needed uh, in time. <laughs> the end result. The end result speaks for itself. Thank you very much. How important then for you was it to find the right narrator for the film? Because of course it's such an integral part of the story and what you're you're what you're you're showing and hearing on the screen. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Mark Hanna. Mark Hanna is a is a famous uh, uh, singer and uh, speaker and actor uh, here in uh, in Italy. He's from Buffalo, New York. Yeah. 
uh, I, I was looking for uh, the perfect voice and I knew him as a singer. He is a blues singer, he's a great uh, blues singer, very famous here in Italy. And I, when I spoke to him, I said, uh, hey, hey man, you got the right voice. And it's the same thing for the for the actor. I, I made a, a lot of castings uh, for uh, looking for the perfect actor, but I couldn't find it. And then I I realized that I I knew him in another version because he is uh, the sound uh, um, sound producer uh, that I have worked with. He is a he is a musician. He is a sound designer. Uh, and I told him, Have you ever made uh, the actor? You know, but uh, I can try. And I found out that he was the right person. Uh, and so I matched him with the perfect voice. And I tried to do this uh, this mix of uh, to to have my the character that I had me in my mind. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it because um, the narration is one of my favorite things. Uh, it's, a li- as you say, a voice you can really listen to and a voice that really takes you into it. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, I have to ask, considering all the work you did into it, the editing process must have been an immense project in itself, was it? Yes, yes absolutely. You said you said. It was a uh, huge because I, I I made before I made the the audio track the the speech and over the speech then I had to okay uh, first I added the, the my shootings my my images what I shot then I had the four fifths of uh, empty <laughs> empty spaces which okay now I have to fill this uh, this holes. And I had to find uh, the material with uh, these uh, illustrators, uh, with the artificial intelligence uh, images, and with uh, the, all the other things that I could use uh, without uh, the, the the copyright. That was uh, the the main obstacle. To, yes. uh, because it's uh, an independent movie. So I had to do it, uh, everything uh, with uh, imagination. How, how long, roughly, did, you, did it take overall, the entire editing process, do you think? Uh, eight months. Mm. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised, but still incredible, eight months. A fun process overall, though, right? Was there... Uh, was there an aspect and of the total package, so the, cre- the entire creation of Uncommon Stories American Horror that you particularly enjoyed the most? Uh, well, I I enjoyed the most when I had the perfect uh, drawings from my illustrators, so when I had the perfect image, because I, uh, each image that you see created by AI was uh, maybe the 20th or 30th uh, version. I made a, a lot of attempts to find what I had in my mind exactly, mm. because I knew, I knew exactly what I wanted. I uh, wrote it down, but it it wasn't at, uh, at the first uh, attempt, the things that I needed. Also with, uh, with the sketchers, with the drawers, uh, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. But then, when I had exactly what I had in my mind, I was really satisfied because what I see now is what I had in my mind, and it, it's really difficult to have. I know because uh, many times you have to. Uh, it's okay. It's okay like this. I wanted something else, but I can uh, I can say okay. No, I wanted exactly what I had in my mind, and I got it. You got it. I absolutely adore that. It, it, your enthusiasm for not just the work that went into it, but the project itself is absolutely wonderful. And it it, it, it jumps off the screen. It is so clear that this is exactly what you wanted it to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, on the, 
on the flip side then turning that around what talking about the overall package again is there an area that was so much work or so frustrating for you that you'd just rather never have to go through that again uh during the editing process sir during any part of the creation of the film, from your writing to your vision to going out and about to editing, whatever it might be. Well, the the, the hardest part was to connect uh, each story. This uh, in, in, as a vision, as a connection of the stories, uh, it, it was really hard to, to find the right connections. Uh, as I told you, I, I didn't want just, uh, okay, cut and jump to another. And also, uh, visibly, uh, I wanted to, that it was a, a natural flow of images, a natural flow of words, even though uh, I, um, it was in, it, in Italian, obviously, I, I wrote it down. And I realized that uh, many things sounded better in English, in English, <laughs> absolutely. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, uh, I... Yeah, I had two versions of the movie, Italian version and English version. And I can tell you that the English version is so much better. Mm. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. For the well, I've seen, I've seen the both versions. Yeah. And I don't speak Italian, so I effectively watched it first, completely blind, uh, not un not not understanding a single word, and just went on the visuals alone. And then, of course, I've heard now and seen and heard the English version as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, because I don't speak Italian, naturally, the English version is going to be better for me. Um, one of the things I love, one of the things I think is so amazing, is how you've been able to cut down and can cut down and tell very concise stories that are so large that you could fill an entire film with them. And I mean, the, the it opens effectively with one of the biggest with the Amityville era and elements like that. Um, how much did you have to cut and trim out to kind of get this concise story? Uh, it, well, it, it took a long uh, time because uh, I wrote down before the whole story. And then I just had to, uh, okay, this is interesting, but it's not uncommon. This is, uh, I, I want to tell all the, um, the, the most interesting uh, facts. So you can uh, watch, you can, can go on watching without getting bored. This was my goal because the hardest thing in a documentary is to keep the attention uh, high of the viewer. And so I had also to make uh, uh, also a, a graphic uh, uh, drawing. Okay, here the attention could be uh, too low, so I have to give a peak. I have to make the this story that is uh, or the, the, this thing that is more interesting. So okay, I can uh, take high the attention of the viewer. Uh, it's a, it's a thing that uh, Pink Floyd uh, did when they wrote down uh, the music. I, I read that they they made graphics. Okay, here uh, we can go down. Then we go. We have to go up with the music, with the solo, or with something else. And it, it works for all the for every form of art, music, uh, cinema, and also writing. I would almost I almost want to see a version of. A common stories American horror where your initial idea of using music might have taken place instead of the art considering you've got such a high interest in music as well it could be the the, the driving uh, for the second chapter I'm, I'm thinking about it because I would like to to make the in different forms of art uh, for each uh, chapter so the mm. music would be the the leading guide uh, for, uh, for the other stories that I am writing now. All, also, uh, mainly because uh, it will be about the south, uh, the south part. So we have Memphis, uh, we have uh, New, New Orleans, uh, and, uh, and the music is the, the leading uh, of, of everything. I will talk about uh, Robert Johnson and media, many other things that uh, have music uh, as a guide. <laughs> I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait. Um, I, I, 
just based off what I've seen already, I, the idea of covering those states and those areas of America and those histories uh, immediately brings a smile to my face. You know, um, I can't wait. But obviously, I've got to wait. So, but for now, obviously, we're talking in common stories of American horror because that is right now that's the important thing. Um, obviously, we want to get this seen worldwide. We want everyone to see it. We want people to talk about it and so on. What do you need to do to kind of get as much eyes on this film? Yeah, uh, I hope that people can have the, the chance to to view and to appreciate uh, all the efforts that I have made in uh, in making this uh, this feature. Uh, I hope they will be interested. I hope they will be curious also to know other stories when uh, when they get out uh, from the vision. Uh, okay, I wanna search. Uh, on Wikipedia on, uh, or uh, anywhere else uh, the stories because all these stories are based on true facts so mm. they can find uh, maybe they can find uh, other elements that I didn't that I didn't find it, it could be interesting <laughs> yeah and I think uh, I think it's really important that even I, I, I know I knew a lot of the stories already um, you know but there was still a few that I didn't. So even though I felt like I was learning something new and it automatically makes me want to go and do more research and so on. Um, it really, really deserves a ton of praise for what you've managed to accomplish here in the amount of time you did. And admittedly, before I even pressed play, I thought, well, this is going to be at least three hours. And it wasn't. <laughs> so that was quite a shock. <laughs> Giorgio, no, no, no. thank you. Giorgio, I really appreciate uh, what you've done here. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Carl. It's, it's been a really uh, pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It is gratefully appreciated. You can find us over at gbhbl.com, our full website, where reviews, news, and so much more goes up daily. We're also on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, threads, at GBHBL. Just search for GBHBL and you will find us out there. We also have merchandise on sale. You can access the shop via the website.